are at the Wrecker Games. Hopefully the first annual. You can see there are a ton of cars. We are going to start walking. It's interesting, we have a window sticker to get in and out of the games. And I've got my camera bag. This is a chair umbrella, a chair, because in one of the videos, Liz Lizzie said to bring an umbrella. Anyway, we are excited. We're gonna go up in the vendor area. And then the games start just above well, the driving games, but there's games on the sand. I don't know. This way, I'm waiting to just say that part now. You're right here. Just kind of angle the nose out a little bit. Oh, no, I'm not even here with anything else. Look, it's the man of the hour, the day, the whole game, that's chat. Wired pretty much, I don't know, everybody's car. Did he sabotage anybody? No, he probably didn't. Leaping Jeep. <laughs> and what else? I probably should have less left some of my supplies in the car. That would have been smart. And I could have walked back and get it, but it's fine. We're burning calories. Poutine. From Bigfoot, we're definitely coming back here to eat poutine. This one's for you, Mom. Eric, these tow trucks are huge. They are so big. Look at this. They're all kind of the same color as Rory's. This one looks really comfortable inside. <laughs> Broke. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, he's the OG, from what I hear, of YouTube recovery. So, he might be a winner. You know, maybe I spoke too soon at the Expo Games. I don't know. There's lots of cool stuff here. We've got the Army here. Does anybody want to join the Army National Guard? Look at this thing. for those of you who know what you're looking at. The only drones that are in the sky are the ones that have the permission from the San Hollow Resort. So please respect that. To be seven to one with Heavy D, and nobody threw my name out there except for myself, thank you. <laughs> so my truck is a 1941 G506 Chevrolet military truck, and it's on a Dodge first gen chassis. Um, it's pretty well built, 205 with the doubler, um, I'm not going to disclose the horsepower, but I guarantee I make more horsepower than all the trucks combined. Wow. Wow. 
They're actually going to be welding their own trophies. And just so everybody knows, there's only one first place trophy, but there's four last place trophies. The first round competition is painting. They're going to paint. Each team is going to paint their, what is this? Suzuki, a Suzu, with spray cans. I think everybody realizes on Sunday video. events picked for the first areas directly east there is a piece of like a ramp a metal ramp that is the north towards the lake on the street that is the dino area we have the rollover and then that built my motor didn't they are doing all of these competitions at the same time the different competitions except for the painting and um so I got to see Fab Rats, Paul, do the welding competition. Looks like this is Rory's truck over here, Trail Mater. I don't know what this is, but it's kind of a bummer they're doing them all separately. You just got to wander around. But I think that Paul did a good job on the trophy he welded. And we'll see which one he gets. But it was loud. Yeah. I just heard a kid. Just heard a kid. I swear, I just heard a kid say, "What the hell?" <laughs> oh, look at this. We gotta believe it. Oh, no. He's still sending it. Massive 
diesel lover, I am not surprised. more awesome than everybody else because diesel's awesome you hear that matt what else you got to say for everybody you know what it's not how hard you hit it it's how you hit it hard loving it that was incredible to BFE to get away from the crowd and the generators and the noise and there were tables here um, but this is a seems to be a route for vehicles to drive on. I got poutine for lunch. Uh, it has been forever since I've had it. The first place I had it was in Canada. Oh no it's cold. I mean I walked like half a mile. Well probably a mile little cold. It's good. Mm -hmm. Merlin's rig is pretty awesome. He is the, well, from what I saw, I don't know if anybody else made it, but he is the only one who made it in the dead poles. First they pulled the banana 
and then they pulled the uh, blue steel with the Morver on top well on the trailer and he just he was bouncing he was boinging and he was bouncing and uh, he made it and then Paul I don't know what it was that busted but a bumper or something I think the day is pretty much over it's just vendors and food and that is it and I'm pretty tired I'm ready to lay down in the sand seriously ready to lay down but the day might be over for me because I am exhausted I got in late last night woke up early so I might go find a place to stay for this evening stay tuned maybe this will all be one video but we'll see this morning when I got in to head to the record games my check engine light came on. So I just came to O'Reilly's and it's not pulling up anything. And she said that typically when it does that, it's a fuse or something. So check the fuses like a cigarette lighter fuse, but the ones up here, my cigarette lighters are working. Check engine light right there. This is excessive, I know, it's excessive, but I have this because for my review channel, testing different cords, plugs, and everything for the items I review, that's why I got this. And there's a way that you can test the fuses with this. So I'm trying to look up some YouTube videos to see how to do that. YouTube told me to go to this this one looks like a Wi-Fi, <laughs> a Wi-Fi uh, sign symbol. Beep, 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 beep. Okay, that's working. And if it beeps, it's good. So these ones I saw are fine. Let's try this. Okay, good, good. Ooh, this is so cool. I feel like a mechanic. Okay, those are good. I'm just kidding. There's props to mechanics out there. That one's good. Those are all fine. How do I do those ones? I don't even have a replacement for those. Okay, let's figure this out. There's no other ones. How do I test those big square ones? There's, that's not the problem. There's no way. I wish. I have given up for now on my check engine light. I'm exhausted. I'm really over this car and their check engine light. So I came out to this BLM land area that is pretty popular. I want to see how many people are out here sleeping. It's in a similar area as where the people ask me for money. It's very washboarded, but it's like that one's like way over there. You have to go a different way to get there. So I am curious to see how many people are out here. not be the place for me um it's not muddy but there are some tire tracks so we'll go as far as we can yeah my spot's taken I, most spots are probably going to be taken i i was yeah well not everybody has that hotel money okay or that airbnb money okay There was a good spot up farther, but it was a no camping sign. Okay, that's the trail. Okay. Hey, last night I slept across the street from Maverick, so this is an upgrade. 
at least I found a spot. I'm surprised. That is the end of day one. So exciting. Amazing. There were a lot of people who said that they had seen my YouTube video of the victory pies. Yes, I did give them out the victory pies. I just wasn't thinking about it to get it on camera. You would have thought I did. I would have, but I did it. Anyway, so it was nice to see those people and thank you so much for saying hello. Uh, and any new subscribers here, that is awesome. I appreciate that. And hello to Erica. If she is watching, she is the first person ever to ask me for a picture. I never, I never really expected that. Yes, you should think like that, but I never did really. Uh, so anyway, I am going to be hitting the sack soon. I am exhausted and we'll see you later. We'll see you in that video or we'll see you in the next part. I don't know which one this is going to be. So good night. Day two of the record games. We're headed up there. People who can drive up there are able to. Otherwise we can huff it or catch a ride. Oh goodness, it's lots of sand. I need to get my glasses, sunglasses out. We have to wait for the traffic so we can walk through the tunnel. sandy <laughs> but I wore the right shoes I wore my trail runners remember those at the last minute this is the middle area I don't know I've asked some people where they know where they're gonna be driving they don't but super stoked what is the time time check look at that water it is beautiful, 10.15, still getting ready. I wouldn't be surprised if they don't start until 11. Honestly, with all the people coming up here, look at that water, is it beautiful on camera?
at a slight standstill on the uh, Isuzu pole. BSF has made it. They just had to pull their Isuzu up. Word was that Paul flipped his Isuzu. And now Matt is currently going.
it is the end of day two wrecker games and it was so awesome where's my phone it was awesome and i am exhausted it ended up raining really bad at the end and I will include some of my footage from the Isuzu poll, but I actually, I was in a very good position for the first time BSF Eric was pulling the Isuzu up. He was winching it up. And so I said that I would um, give them my footage. And then from then on, I've just figured I'd continue to get the good shots for them. If I was able, because Gene, the camera guy who introduced himself to me yesterday, super nice. Like the BSF guys, right away, so nice. So nice. So, um, yeah, it's Gene and then Blake. The Blake is the one with the flipped up hat. He's the camera guy too. So, yeah, I just figured, hey, I will film for them and I'm going to give them my footage so uh, I won't have all of the same footage they're going to have it and then I'll just have some little clips to show but it was a really great time the event for today was called the Wrecker Rodeo and all of the contestants were pulling an Isuzu up the I don't know what it was, the maze or something. It was crazy, crazy. And from what I heard, Rory drove up backwards, up the the chute is what they call it, the very end. And I think he was towing his Isuzu. I don't know for sure, but all of the videos that come out from these participants slash contestants are going to be amazing. And the videos that we have here, I mean, it's just going to be different uh, points of view and angles and experiences. So there was an unfortunate incident today. Extremely sad life flight had flown in. If you watched any of my shorts for day two, you will have seen a life flight. All of a sudden, the MC, the guy on the microphone he said that life flight was going to be coming in i thought it was going to be coming in for somebody else but it ended up landing and then it stayed there and stayed there and stayed there and stayed there for a while and the record games i don't know if they had officially started because it was all over everywhere you had to walk it was all over i mean people were scattered all over this this hillside, mountainside, rock side, it was crazy. So anyway, um, from the source that I heard it from, a reliable source, they said that it was a friend of Matt's. He had known and he was, uh, he had a heart attack and they were performing CPR and they even had the AEDs and Life Flight came in. And then when Life Flight wasn't taking off, I had thought that it was okay. But I had asked this source that I got the information from if they knew what had happened and they shared with me that the individual passed away. It may have been a heart attack. Absolutely devastating just the first ever record games and this tragedy and they from what I heard they did the paramedics and everybody they did as much as they possibly could and even uh the the MC came over the speakers and said hey we're gonna say a prayer the people up high, we had no idea what was going on. We just knew there was a helicopter and that was it. So they were saying the prayer and they were still performing CPR on this, this guy. So Matt was thinking like, what, 
what do I do? What do we do? Because there's all these people still here for this. And so they proceeded with the game. And you could tell, now that looking back, you could see how it really weighed on Matt. And Lizzie, uh, I was told that Lizzie also knew this person. And during one of the, uh, the Isuzu poll, Lizzie was in the Isuzu steering it. And she, I thought that she was just really tired because we were, we were just over halfway through, I think. So she looked to be really tired and somebody was like, how you doing Lizzie? And she's like, good. I don't even know if she said good, but I just thought she looked exhausted and you know, that was weighing on their minds, like how sad. So um, my condolences to the family who is going through that and to their friends who knew this person and yeah. Now I wanna share some tips that I thought for anybody who might come in in the years to come if they plan to continue to hold this is get a feel for what the the wrecker rodeo is going to be where it's going to drive they were giving away free side-by-side -side rides so you could probably have asked them to take you up there and and to get a feel for it because the area is so huge and i was clear over on the way opposite side from where they were starting and so i was walking i was just walking everywhere and i personally didn't need the chair um because i was walking everywhere some people brought their chairs the like the the chairs like the helinox where it has this this prongs and then you hook the the seat part on I wouldn't really recommend those because they are clunky and take a lot to put together and take apart. I had an um, GCI, just a three leg pull collapse chair and it worked really well, but I wish I would have gotten the click. However, it was too pricey for me. But next year, I think I would like the click chair, which you just, it's sim similar to a Helinox chair, but it just like pops open and some people had those. Or, I know this sounds crazy, that chair, well, it's not really a chair, but it's a one-legged chair and it has just the bar like that you lean on. I was thinking towards the end, because I was using my, my monopod, to hold like just to rest on it's a carbon fiber so it's really really strong but i was exhausted just ended up running around all these um these rocks so some tips there and uh you're going to be walking i mean you can't really you're not really going to sit in one place you can but you're not going to if you want to continue to see the route and there's a lot of people i'm sure that they were if they continue this they're going to have to limit the number of people there's just like there's no way and um, I don't I didn't hear of anybody getting injured or anything on the rocks but it was very likely it, it could have been likely to happen so those were some things that I thought of for next year I won't continue to ramble on but did I say BSF did I say them dude I don't know I'm so tired Tomorrow is trail cleanup, and then there's going to be the vendors there till 5. The closing ceremony is at 6, and then it closes at 8. I'm so exhausted, I can't really think much anymore, but I almost forgot to do an outro to this day 2 video, and uh, we'll see what, we, what footage we have to put together for this video, but... Uh, I'm happy to give my footage to BSF. Super, super nice. Super, super nice people. Shower for the 
the first time this record games. I am at, I am at Anytime Fitness and uh, in St. George. Hurricane Anytime Fitness showers were all occupied. So I came to St. George. Thankfully, I know about this place because on Google Maps it says that it, like, you can't even find it. Or it's, and it says it's closed, so I don't know if they're doing that on purpose or what. I will say that BSF did um, offer to let me stay with them at their Airbnb or something that they're staying at, and which I took them up on the offer when it was when it was offered. Okay, offered. But at the end of the games, everything was such a cluster, and I didn't exchange. And nobody thought to exchange information before because we just thought it was going to end up probably a little bit, well, a lot of it differently. But the rain was coming. We had to just like get every everybody off the mountain so people split. And this really nice couple, Jill and Chris, gave me a ride to my car, who are from Wisconsin, same place as BSF. So thank you so much to them. I got a ride in their Jeep. I don't even know. I've ever ridden in a Jeep, but it was so crazy because I'm used to a CX-5 where um, I can't go anywhere. So I kept like, oh, can we make it up that? What? Like, it was insane. I mean, insane to me. So anyway, I'll meet up with BSF today. Yeah. So I'm going to get in the shower. I'm going to get in the shower now. Get ready. Get clean. <sighs> and go. So what, what is your name? My name is Staff Sergeant Spillman. Okay, Staff Sergeant Spillman is going to tell us. I thought that this was a civilian rig. It is not, it's military. So what yep. is it? So this is the JLTV, oh, really? the Joint Light Tactical Vehicle. It replaced the Humvees. Oh, I, it looked like it was on a Humvee platform, but it looks so nice. So it's actually completely different, designed okay. by Oshkosh and built by them. It's what replaced them. They're pretty, they're pretty sweet. It's they're capable beautiful. vehicles. So uh, what is this used for? This can be besides the obvious personnel carriers, gun trucks, command vehicles, comm vehicles. Depends on the package. There's three or four variants of it, and each one has different things it specializes for. This one is a personal carrier right now, but we have it set up to be a gun truck. We just got to install the rings. Okay. And uh, what MOS would this take to drive? to drive yeah like what MOS do you need to be in to drive this thing you can be in any unit that has them because oh. everybody has to be able to drive them really yep so Dang. like I'm a I'm a 91 Bravo which okay. is a wheeled vehicle mechanic okay and he's a 91 Lima which is the construction equipment mechanics but we fix them but any anybody that has them in their unit has to be able to drive yeah so we train everybody how to drive it is beautiful it is a it it's is pretty wild. so good looking yeah so where it's sitting right now is called fording mode and it'll actually ford 60 inches of water with the fording kit on it so it'll go through five feet of water and in its lowest suspension setting the bottom skid plates get about three and a half inches off the ground what kind of gas mileage does it get it gets <laughs> eight to 12, depending really? on the load. If it's loaded down pretty heavy, it's pretty much standard for all military vehicles is they have to get 300 miles out of a tank. Okay, so. how big is the tank? On this one, I don't know offhand. Yeah. Wow. I wanna say they're 26 gallons. Right, yeah. Something like that. The new Sequoia Hybrid, people are testing it and they're, it's getting like 15 miles to the gallon. Wow. Yeah, a That's hybrid. I know, Not so we could just get one of these. Well, the price tag is yeah. 306000 from Oshkosh, which isn't bad. No, I thought it was gonna be way more. 306000 Okay, I think it's at 106000 I'm like, no, that's like an F-150 now. It is really beautiful. Yeah, it's- I love it. It's quite impressive. I'll be in the market for when they're selling these off, you know? Well, they're gonna be selling Humvees now. I don't want one of those. Yes, you do, they're great. No. I like them. <laughs>
But yeah, the other cool thing they did with these is they got rid of the transaxle, or not the transaxle, the transfer case, and went to a transaxle to eliminate the possibility of if you were to hit an IED, it would turn into shrapnel. Oh. And so this, it goes from the transmission to the rear axle and then forward to the front axle and eliminated that transaxle or the transfer case completely okay. so that it is less likely to create shrapnel if you were to hit something. At? Amazing. Yeah, they're, they're really cool. Oh, it looks so good. There's an, I thought this was a, somebody modified a Humvee to look like this. <laughs> no, it's... So that is an insult, different. and I apologize for insulting Which you. Which is funny, because now this is the baby of the military's <laughs> right. vehicles. It's the little one. It's beautiful. I'm not going to film inside the cab, but we'll just go on another little look yeah, around, absolutely. and that'll be gorgeous. Thank you for explaining what this yeah, was. Absolutely. I no, really I appreciate your time, and you guys are probably yeah. recruiting here. Uh, we are supporting the recruiters. We're just we're here for the display and for what you just Okay, if, do. if anybody wants to get in contact with yeah, get in the Army, what is it? No! No, no phone number. Uh, the phone number, I, I don't know. But We're doing a little National, recruiting here. You can okay. go to nationalguard.com or go. go and find your local recruiting offices, any armories. Uh, that's how you're going to get in touch with everybody. Spillman sent easy. you. Yeah. All right. I sent you. somebody. Yeah. Say, say my name though, because I get points for that. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I am here with Dustin from Easy Flight. Hello. And he is going to talk to us about what this system is all about. So yeah. go ahead, Dustin. Thank you. Yeah, Dustin with Easy Flight. We got our whole crew out here at the Matt's Off-Road Record Games. And what we're displaying right now is our four-way Hyperflex kit. Now this kit connects to all four tires and allows you to equalize your tire pressure, deflate them all, or inflate them all at the exact same time. So right here you'll see all of our tires are currently at 25.7 PSI. I open up to deflate. Close it on up, and then if I want to inflate, I simply connect it to our 10.6 CFM air compressor, and we're ready to go. Wow. It is just that easy. Yeah, so Corbin had told me that this you can use uh, NOS or carbon. Or CO2. Uh, CO2. Thank yep. you. Yep. Okay, so this flat hose. Yep, this is a hybrid polymer hose. Super durable, super flexible, does not kink, does not hold memory. We have another style as well, our recoil hose. That one will coil itself back up for you. But yes, this one goes up to 300 PSI and works great for CO2. Right, okay. And so this will work with any uh, Any compressor. power tank, any ARB, and any other compressor that either connects with an industrial Milton style or the USA standard fittings. Or if you need an adapter, we sell those as well on our website. And where can people find you? Yeah, easyflate.com as well as easyflate at Instagram. <laughs> yeah, and if you're ever at any expo off-roading, just look for these. Yes. They're gonna wear we'll these. At, they're gonna wear these at every one now. Forever. They're fused to our heads. Their confidence <laughs> is is immense. Oh thank you. All right, well Dustin, thank you for your time. I appreciate it. Great to meet you. with Calvin from Devos. Devos. I didn't want to pronounce it incorrectly, but he has these they have these really amazing lighting solutions. So he's going to tell us a little bit about those. Yeah, hey guys. So what we got here today for you is the Devos Light Ranger. So the idea is we got really sick of staring at our giant Coleman lantern. It's the only thing really bright enough to light up your campsite. So we decided to make a better lamp for it. So what we did is we took a really high powered flashlight lamp that we created ourselves and we put them on these giant nine foot tall poles. Now the whole point of the pole is to get that light out of your face, right? So you're not, you can actually see the whole campsite. It'll light up to 60 feet in any direction, which is super awesome. They're also super, super tough. You kind of look over here, 
you can see we've actually got a white ranger underneath our tires they're super sturdy they're water resistant they're really powerful you're gonna get about 12,000 lumens sorry 1200 lumens out of this um, with all four sides on for four hours if you do just half you'll get all that lumen for about eight hours and if we do just one then you'll get about 16 hours out of it so Very super nice. awesome and you guys also have these kits yep so we have the amber light kits they just clip on like that we also have um you can also buy these super heavy duty oh, wow. solar panels oh and they'll just clip on the top right there oh wow so you can charge those as well and then That's we also nice. have the fast charging kit okay and this this cord will run nine feet so you can run all the way to the top and charge oh, if you want to wow. use it longer yeah because this will also charge your phone your gopro whatever you need yep how can people find you um we're just devos so you can search us up online and then yeah just devos light ranger yeah okay. devos.com you guys on instagram yeah we are okay very cool all right i love the lighting okay thank you calvin for your time who doesn't love a grilled cheese sandwich? I like it with tomato soup too. Look at this. I got the sweet and spicy. It's got honey with pepper jack. So we're gonna give this a try. Look at that cheese pole. Look at that. Oh man, oh man, oh my goodness. What, 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 what? We're over a foot, we're over a foot. Okay, we're, we're over a foot. Okay, I'm just gonna have to eat it now because that is a serious, that's a serious cheese pull, okay? We get it, we get it, that's, that's a cheese pull. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Right away you taste that cheese, the flavor of the cheese. Uh-oh, I'm missing something. Then the honey's going on, a little bit of the spice. It's delicious. So good. Oh my goodness. I'm going to head over to the award ceremony. That's going to be kicking off. So we'll go take a look at that. And then the record games are over. Let's go. Hey Eric, yeah. we got a special something for you. Challenger Lift reached out to us and they want to give you a lift for your shot. No more using a high lift jack. That is incredible. I never would have dreamed. It, this is amazing. We have to do this again. <laughs> Paul's like, hey, you know my cousin Merlin? That's Merlin. So I'm like, I don't want some boring guy with a diesel engine to come and wreck everything at the off-road record games. Do you want to defend yourself? So I've got to give a shout out to all of you guys. Because you're the ones that put me here. I, I literally walked into Matt's shop right before you voted and introduced myself to him. And that is no joke. He said, we'll let the internet decide who the fifth ticket is. And it was seven to one. It was about nine to one, actually. So he didn't know a lot about me other than what my cousin Paul might have told him. And I know a lot of people on the internet, they know, you know, I was involved with Vegas Rat Rods and a bunch of other goofy stuff. But I actually used to professionally rock crawl. In fact, I had a chance to race King of the Hammers in 2010. And uh, my wife had to have emergency brain surgery. So I sold everything. And I think I redeemed myself here. Thank you. We're gonna open up to all of you about something that happened, happened yesterday. And bring you in because you guys are nothing but family to us and we love you and I have to recognize Washington County Sheriff's Department the EMT medical staff 
our National Guard for being here. And also for Life Flight. I need Hefe to come up here. And Yesterday, you're probably wondering what Life Flight happened. And I lost one of my best friends yesterday. That's Robert Blake. He is a good man. He was the head of our security team. He's gonna be missed. He was an instrumental person to help make all of this happen. And we're trying, we're raising money for his wife Paige, who also was down here helping us put this together. She was the one at registration. You probably all met her as you came through. So we're raising money for her. If you want to donate, uh, we have yellow buckets back here to help with that. And there's also a GoFundMe. But I just want to thank Robert wherever he's at. He was a great guy. It'll be hard going on without him. We're going to have a moment of silence. Thank you. All right, we're going to move along. Um, Robert would have wanted us to do exactly what's happened. This is a celebration. Let's celebrate. Let's keep going with this. All right. We're going to take a break from the giveaways. There's plenty more, but we are going to recognize our judges. Next year, we're going to do it earlier because uh, we all like sun. Just saying that. Third loser of the first annual record games. Give it up for the OG BSF, Eric. I'm just glad that I finished. I'm glad I got to the top. You guys all left me. I had to do it myself, but I got to the top. I, I got it done. There you go. Give it up for Eric. Trophy. I have to actually weld it the whole trophy, so you know it's going to hold up. Second loser. Give it up for Paul Cox and the Fab Rats! The winner of the first ever record games, the wild card crazy man, Merlin! So, Rory, that leaves one place. I've just noticed. I, and it still says first on it. First loser, but it says first. You guys have not voted yet. We want to hear your vote, and we're gonna do it by applause. I'm not gonna do it because I'm in it. The People's <laughs> Choice Award. Rudy, show us, what do they get? Okay, so the People's Choice Award trophy, on the plaque it reads, the real winner of the first ever off-road record games. And you guys get to pick who the actual winner is. So, when it's time to applaud for your team, let's hear it. For Merlin. <laughs> Let's go with Paul! Yeah. Let's give it up for Rory! Yeah. Let's give it up for Matt! The people's choice! Rory Irish! Everyone, it's been real. Good night. We'll see you again. We'll let you know what it is. And thanks for watching. All right, Merlin is auctioning a door off right here, right now on the side of the stage. If you're interested in that, come right on up here. The door to the plantain. So if anybody wants the door off the car from the winner of this record games, come up and bid on it. And we're giving the money to the family.